Hey guys, so today we'll talk about elasticity and by the end of the video you'll really understand some important economic concepts and you'll know why consumers behave the way they do when prices change. Now elasticity is really important to understand because a lot of government policy is based around this idea. So you might be familiar with the word elasticity like a rubber band, the way something stretches. And in a way, this is similar in, in economics. So uh, in basic terms, elasticity is the way one variable changes in response to a change in another variable. And more specifically, in our case, we'll talk about price elasticity of demand. So how does the quantity demanded of something change when the price changes? In other words, when the price goes up or down, how does the amount that people buy change? So the definition of elasticity is this might seem a little confusing. It'll be the first derivative of quantity times price over quantity. Or in simpler terms, it's the percent change in quantity divided by the percent change in price. Now, this is really the definition I like more, the second one. So that's the one that we'll be talking about. Now, as you know from our pre previous videos, there's an inverse relationship between price and quantity. So when something becomes more expensive, people will buy less of it. And likewise, when something becomes cheaper, people will buy more of it. And if you remember, that's represented by the demand curve, right? We have our graph with price up here and quantity over here. The demand curve, as we all know, goes down like this, right? At at a, per at a perfect 45 degree angle, this is an elas elas elasticity of negative one. Now let's talk about the different numbers and what, what they mean. So we have a number line going from negative infinity to positive infinity with zero in the middle. Um, zero is called perfectly inelastic and that is a vertical line. What does that mean? So if you have a price, a really high price here, right? And then the price all of a sudden drops or the other way around, you have a price over here and the price goes up. The quantity demanded doesn't change at all. It stays fixed, right? Because the elasticity is zero. That's what that means. It doesn't change regardless of anything. Now, like we said before, negative one, it's called unitary elasticity. Let's write that or unit elasticity, unitary, you'll see it in different textbooks. That's when it's at a perfect 45 degree angle. What does that mean? That means for every 1% change in price, the quantity changes by 1%. That's why it's minus one. Now you might ask, why are we going into the negatives? Um, and you'll see that in the example we'll provide a little later. And it's very rare actually when the elasticity is above zero and that's something that's called a Giffen good. But that's a topic for another video. Now, uh, if it's between negative one and zero, we call this inelastic, which means that the price doesn't change proportionally, right? So if we uh, increase the price by 1%, the quantity demanded uh, in incre decreases by less than 1%, right? And that's common for, um, for really important goods, for necessities. Um, and that would be somewhere that line would be between the 45 degree line and the vertical line. So it would be something like this, for example, right? And anything below negative one and going all the way off to infinity, it's called elastic, like a rubber band. Um, because for every 1% change in the price, the quantity goes down more than 1%, which means people don't really need that good as much. Um, and it will be flatter. So a uh, perfectly inelastic uh, curve, which we never see in real life, it'll be completely flat. That's when elasticity is equal, equal to negative infinity. But in real, in, like I said, in the real world, it'll ne never be negative infinity. So that, those are the demand curves that are between the 45 degree negative one line and the flat line. So it'll be something like this, closer to this way. Why does that make sense? Um, if you imagine a really almost, almost perfect, perfectly inelastic line, let's draw it like this, a tiny change in price, right? Let's say we have a price over here and then it changes just by a little bit, but then all of a sudden that little bit causes 
this huge change in quantity. All right, you guys see what, what I mean by that? We have two prices, but the, and they only change by a little bit, but the quantity changes by a whole lot. That's why that number is really big. It's called elastic. So now let's take a look at some examples to see what these numbers really mean. Now let's take a look at some real world examples to really help you make sense of all this. Let's take into account uh, public transportation, so bus fares. Um, let's say a ticket for a bus costs $1 and the price increases to $1.50, right? Now this is a 50% increase in price, right? And let's say that on an average day, 10,000 people ride the bus. But because of the increasing price now, only 9,500 people start riding the bus. Um, so this is minus 500 or a minus 5% increase in quantity. Um, let's recall the formula for elasticity. It's the change, the percent change in quantity divided by the percent change in price. Now in this case, we have elasticity is equal to minus 5% change in quantity divided by plus 50% change in price. So in other words, this is equal to minus 0.1 elasticity. What does this mean on the demand curve? This means that it would be pretty vertical like this. Why is that? Because initially we had a price of $1 about here, we'll call it P1 and it increased by 50% up to here to P2. But the difference in quantity was pretty small if you think about it compared to the difference in price, right? So you had Q1 here and Q2. Why is that? Let's think about it logically. So this is a bus. People needed to get to work, right? People needed to move around the city. So even if the price went up by a ridiculous 50%, only a small amount of people will stop riding it because they need to get to work. Of course, there's the 500 people, the 5% that said, okay, whatever, I'll just walk the couple blocks. But you still have the thousands of other people that need the bus. That's why elasticity is close to zero. So anything between zero and negative one, it's a necessity. People will continue buying that thing or using the service, whatever, because they need it. It's a necessity. Another example would be like water or socks you know, things like that, that people will just buy regardless. Let's take a look at another example from the other side. Um, so let's look at a farmer's market. We'll have a market. And uh, it's August. So there's a bunch of farmers, dozens of farmers selling the same apples, right? Um, and let's say this guy this usually charges $2 for a pound of apples and he increases his price to $2.20, right? Now this is a 10% increase in price. But because, ima imagine yourself as a, as a customer walking around seeing all these farmers. You have dozens of farmers to choose from and you have this one guy whose apples are more expensive. So obviously what we would see is his sales drop from say 50 pounds per day down to 10 pounds per day, right? Which is what? Which is a minus 80% increase in quantity. What's the elasticity here? Elasticity is the change in, in quantity, so minus 80% divided by the change in price, plus 10%. So this is an elasticity of minus 8. What does that mean on a graph when we look at it? So if this is the demand curve like this, first he charged $2, right? Over here. This is his initial quantity. But as soon as he increased the price by just a little bit, all of a sudden, there's a huge difference in the quantity that he sold. And this makes sense because if you're a customer, you can stand right here in front of this guy selling for $2.20. You can take a few steps to your left and buy the apples for $2. Or buy a few, take a few steps to your right and buy the same apples for 10% less. Why would you buy from him? This is what happens in perfect market conditions, so to speak. When you have the same product, for sale from a bunch of different uh, companies or salesmen, uh, as soon as one of them increases the price by just a little bit, he's going to see a huge drop in sales. That's why we call a number that, that's from negative one onwards to negative infinity elastic or highly elastic. Because as soon as there's a small change in price, people stop buying the product. 
So I hope that these two examples help you make sense of all this. Really hope you enjoyed this video. Click subscribe and check out our other topics. Stay geeky, my friends.